I love God's stories. That's a, a, a term we've used for the last several years, God's stories. Where does God intersect your story, my story? And the husband and wife team of Billy and Jody Ballinger, they're our next guest, and Billy's a singer-songwriter and an evangelist. And Jody is an author and speaker. You might think everything was great with the, those job descriptions, right? Well, they join us now to share their story of how God brought them out of a past that was filled with darkness and torment. Billy and Jody, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you hey for guys. having us. Thanks for having us on the show today. Well, well, I just want to let you know that my story really begins when I was nine years old. Uh, my mom and dad got a divorce. Up until then, I feel like I had a pretty normal childhood. Um, my mom moved me and my two sisters uh, in with her sister, and it was a drug house. Wow. And within a week, I was nine years old in the third grade. Within a week, I was popping pills, smoking pot. By the age of 11, I, that was my first trip to juvenile. Um, by 13, I'm in the scared straight program. Uh, 14, I'm on meth. And thank goodness by 15, I was sent to a reform school and it was faith-based changed my life. <laughs> and I was shown the love of God uh, that I had been longing for. I wanted structure in my life from the age, really from the age of nine, I was able to do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, but I, wa I longed for someone to love me and to give me structure. And I didn't have that. Uh, so when I went to the reform school, uh, I was given structure. And they showed me the love of God and uh, it changed my life. I, uh, I dedicated my life to Jesus. Um, and uh, then I uh, went into, uh, I joined the choir and this is where I met this guy right here, <laughs> Billy Ballinger. Yeah. So both of us kind of have an interesting past. Of course, I know, I realize everybody has one. This is kind of a long story. We'll try to condense it here, but you know, we just see God working throughout our entire life, and we're very grateful for that today. We just want to say that. But it didn't come without struggle at different times. I was adopted at age three. Uh, my biological parents just uh, had a lot of struggles, young teen parents, but I was adopted by my aunt, my uncle. Um, but first heard the gospel of Jesus Christ at age 10, actually in a fire station. Somebody pulled out the fire truck, set up a some, I guess you would call this some creative creative evangelism, and they invited all of us little kids into the fire station, sitting on those chairs, and somebody got up on a little stage inside that garage and preached the gospel to us. And so I remember asking Jesus into my heart at that time. But then I had a lot of struggles. The adoptive parents got divorced. Uh, I had, for some reason, as a young kid, had a real struggle uh, finding community and friends. I just seemed to be the kid that was always made fun of and ridiculed from school to school to school. And it wasn't a little bit, it was very extreme. I look back now and go, that was really a plan of the enemy to destroy something God had put on the inside of me because he wanted me to be a communicator. And so, you know, I didn't realize that, but I, so I started running from my problems, didn't get along with step parents very well, running away, running away. And of course I end up in juvenile correctional facility I end up in a juvenile correctional facility uh, where I met Jody at. And uh, it's been around for about 165 years now. It's called Josiah White's New Possibilities in Wabash, Indiana. And uh, they just showed us a lot of love. I was there for 15 months. Jody was there for 14 months. I've been there about eight months or so, and I joined the choir. And then uh, it's a co-ed, obviously. It's a big campus, okay? So they had uh, troubled teens living, boys living on one end of the campus and girls living on the other. And each of us lived in these cottages where we had house parents. And again, like Jody said, it was faith-based and man, I'm just, we're just very grateful. You know, to this day, we still have a relationship with that facility. They bring us in we speak into the lives of the kids there, but, but boy, you know, we, we met there in choir. Uh, I like to always point out that Jody asked me to be her boyfriend. And it wasn't the other way around, but anyway. The way I lived, I was. Yeah, so she was, uh, <laughs> yeah. so anyway, we started going together, became boyfriend and girlfriend. We fall in love at this place and then we get released several months later. She gets released uh, a month before I did, but she goes back to the same environment, same surroundings. And then I go back to my county where I was from. She went right back into the party life 
I'm having a chance to play basketball at my high, high school and all these things, but, but now I'm in love with her. So that didn't last long before I ran away from home again, went to her house. Now, listen, I wasn't raised like this, but when I showed up at her house, her mom literally let me move in to the home. My mom would have never had allowed this. And um, of course, Jody writes about this in her book, uh, The Prostitute's Daughter. And so anyway, I'm living in the home. I'm starting to party. The friends that she hung out with were all the friends that used kind of kids that used to beat me up all the way through school, you know? So, so I realized at age 17, I had to make a change in my life if I was going to be able to keep Jody, if I was going to be able to stay in that environment in Muncie, Indiana. And something just snapped on at age 17 on the inside in, in my head. I just started wanting to pay the world back for everything that I had went through. And I became a very violent individual. Uh, and we're partying and we're doing drugs and it's just a very violent lifestyle. But for some reason, that crowd of people accepted me. And I felt, though it may have been empty, it was seemed like love to me and um, was accepted. We're getting more and more trouble. We get married at 17 and 18. Our daughter's born five months later. Then almost a year later, our house is raided by a SWAT team uh, because our house had become the party house. And... Um, they raid our house and who knows, I'm just looking for some identity, but finding it in all the wrong places, you know? So they raid our house with the SWAT team. Uh, they take our daughter from us that day. Yes. They put me and Jody in jail. We bond out of jail. And eight months later is when our trial is gonna be set. So this is a very interesting time in our life where we are at this moment realizing everything's been stripped away. We've lost custody of our daughter. You know, we had accepted Jesus early on, but we weren't living for him, but we started to think about God and talk yes. about God and, and maybe we'd go to church. And yes. And I can remember us laying in bed one day when we're 50. Now, mind you, we're not even 20 yet. <laughs> when we're about 50, we'll start going to church, you know, cause basically our life would be over then. So we should live yeah. <laughs> uh, for God. But it was that time yeah. when everything was stripped from us uh, that we decided, you know what? Everyone we know here is in trouble. Yeah. We need to get our daughter back. So it was at that time we chose to, um, we would rather be homeless and move to Indianapolis and get away from everything that we were involved in. Um, so we moved to Indianapolis. We're living in our cars. We're taking showers and truck truck stops. I get a job as a gas station employee. And um, so yeah. we're saving up the checks to be able to rent a house. And during this time, during this time, though, our daughter was taken out of foster yes. care and given to my mom. Thank God. Yes. Wow. My adopted yes. mom. You know, it's, it's interesting because we're already seeing in your in your story of of God bringing you together, God working in your life. God, uh, you know, you you fall in love at this, you know, 165 year ministry, you know, God brings you to that place. But what happens next is really a, an incredible story. Tell me about the gas station experience. So as Jody said, yeah, we were, you had gotten the job at the gas station and I, I spent a little bit of time in a uh, drug rehab. Once I was released from there, Jody had gotten robbed at gunpoint three different times at this gas station. And as I look back now, I'm like, man, because I told her after the second time, you get robbed again, you're quitting. Now, I, <laughs> as I look back now, I should have made her quit the first time she got robbed. But, but after the second time, I said, if you get robbed again, you know, and she did, she got robbed a third time. I didn't have a job yet. I just got out of uh, a rehab and a hospital. So we go to this gas station to pick up her check. It was supposed to arrive the next day after she quit. And we're in the middle of the day, we're standing in the gas station. Some guy comes in the gas station, he asked for some water to put in his radiator because his truck was overheating. And he takes the water out, he comes back in, he says, well, that's really strange. He says, it's not even, the truck's fine, I don't need the water. Then they start starting up a conversation and they're sitting there talking and she's telling him about the robbery. And she had seen him before because he was a construction contractor and he would come into that gas station as he was doing a job nearby. And I just got frustrated in the middle of that, that, that gas station. And I remember saying to her, we're inside. And I said, really rude. Let's go. I got to find a job. We'll come back later and get your check. 
And um, as soon as I said that, that same guy speaks up and says, hey, do you need a job? And I said, yeah. I'll hi he goes, I will hire you right now. Wow. I'm a construction contractor. I will hire you right now. You need a job, you can come to work for me. He hired me at that moment. Of course, he's got the hook in my mouth now because he just gave me a job. <laughs> Turns out the conversation goes on 15, 20, 30 minutes. Before the conversation is over, he has invited us to church. He has invited him and his wife to come to our house that night and just visit with us. And we said yes. And of course, I keep thinking, this is really good. This guy's really nice. He gave me a job. And they came to our house that night and began to share the gospel with us get to know us, witness to us. And we began to see, you look back now and you go, wow, there was nothing wrong with his truck in the first place. Somehow God it caused God. it to overheat. So he would stop in there at that moment. And he hired me right then. You know, I went to work for him the next day. And then we went to church with him the next night. Now there's a whole nother experience <laughs> there because we had came out of a pretty rough life. But you know, uh, we, we started going to church every time we'd go to this church and they're really fired up for Jesus. Let me just say that it was one of those churches where when you get out of the car and you start to go inside, I can remember our first time we were running late and it was looked like the church was just bouncing. I could hear the music <laughs> and it was just like, I don't know. And you go in there coming out of where we had been, you go into a situation like that and you just feel like needles are sticking in your body needles. all over. Like, I don't want to be in here. And guess what? That couple had saved us a seat in this packed church on the front row, <laughs> on the front row. And I would sit there and lean over to Jody and say, we are not coming back here again. Every service, we kept saying that. Notice I said every service, we kept coming back. And he would answer my Bible questions at work. And, and he had a nickname for me. He called me Potty Mouth. Because I just, every other word was not a nice word in those days, you know. And so, but that couple stayed with us. And a few weeks later, we went to trial. They found us guilty at our trial, but that couple kept showing up in our life. They sentenced us two weeks later, and that couple um, came to the sentencing. The pastor of that church came to the sentencing and got on the stand and became a character witness, but the judge had another plan, and she gave me six years in prison, adult prison, and Jody six years in prison as well. And, uh, you know, we didn't cooperate. We could have I would have probably got a lot less time and I could have kept Jody out of prison, but I just was so worried about my reputation. We would not cooperate with the police at all. And they made an example of us. Yes. But from that moment, that couple and their, uh, his, the guy that witnessed to me, his mom and dad, they kept coming to the prison his and witnessing and to us. His mom and dad came and visited me at the prison every single week for two years. Wow. Every week. Yeah, and just kept sharing the gospel with us. And my mom would bring my daughter to the prison. But, you know, we just dove into the word of God and got saturated in the scriptures. And I like to point this out to those that are listening today. God's mercy is so much bigger than we realize. But I just want to say this. I did not come to God because I thought he was holy and he deserved worship. And truth of the matter is I only dove into the things of God in prison because I wanted out of prison. I wanted to figure out how to get faith to work. How could I get this God who's the only one that can get me back with my wife and back with my daughter? And that's what happened. I began to seek him. You know, those that seek will find. And that's what happened. Then I fell in love with Jesus. Then he got us out of prison one year early. When the judge says, you're not going to get out, you're going to do all your time. We kept praising him in prison, walking around the prison yard, praising him. Wow. Got us out one year early. On the same day, they released us. Yes. Wow. So wow. we had, so we did about two years. Less than two months after being released from prison, we were granted full custody of our baby girl back with no strings attached, never lost her anymore, no more welfare department, no more counseling, and no more drugs. Amen. And Fantastic. that's been. That is such a, a it's, it's such a tremendous story, again, of God's intersection in your life, bringing you to the you know, working in your life, bringing people into your life, bringing situations into your life, and then putting that desire for him inside of you.